is up you guys it's lauren and i've moved places again i'm in my bedroom now i still have the tourney chair though i moved it to my room so i'm going to be doing my um anxiety and panic attacks video today for you i've written down a bunch of notes because it's a big thing for me to talk about and I was going to film this when I first started my YouTube channel, but I didn't because I was still finding it very hard to talk about. So I'm filming it now. So just to start off, um, it's called, what I have is called Generalised Anxiety Disorder. So yeah, that's just the name of it really. And it is panic attacks are caused by a weak sympathetic nervous system. Okay, genuinely, I have no idea what that means. I researched it and I don't remember, so if you want a better uh, explanation of that, check out Zoella's video because she suffers from a lot of the same things I do. So, yeah. So that's that. Okay. So the next thing I have written down is the things I won't do because of my anxiety. And um, I won't go out clubbing, I can't eat properly at restaurants or at tables, which is really weird. That's just from previous panic attacks at eating at a table. But So I find it hard to do that. Um, I won't get on the bus half the time and due to having panic attacks up and down my road on different bus stops, I can only go to one or two bus stops now because um, like the memory things in my head, the little things that tell you, oh, we've done this before, automatically goes, oh my god, we've been to this bus stop and you're going to have a panic attack again. So I have to avoid certain bus stops, which kind of sucks, which is annoying. Um, sometimes when I first developed this, I wouldn't leave the house and I wouldn't leave my bedroom. But I still have days like that where I go to get out of bed and then I'm like... <gasps> I can't do that, I can't leave. And it's easy to joke about now because I've had it for so long, but it's not fun. So, um, what my panic attacks and anxiety feels like is the next thing I have written down here. I kind of skipped it, so I'll do that now. Um, what it feels like is I get extremely sweaty and I know girls don't sweat and all this. Yeah, we do. Uh, I will tell you a story. Okay, I was at um, my boyfriend's, Alex's house, a few weeks ago and I had a massive panic attack. And I sat there and literally I could have been in the shower. I was just drenched in sweat and I had to literally open the back door. Bear in mind, this is when all the um, storms and flooding was going on a few weeks ago. Um, I was sat outside their house in the garden in a strappy top and I was still sweating like I was sat in the Sahara Desert. It was not fun. Eh, uh, no. Um, my breathing gets quite bad, like, I tend to hold my breath a lot, whereas most people tend to hyperventilate. I tend to hold my breath, which is not good, that's worse, well, if not the same as hyperventilating really. Uh, what does that say? Oh, I get extremely shaky. It looks like I wrote shally. I can't read my writing. I get seriously shaky and it feels like I need to escape. It makes me extremely sad and I tend to feel very faint and very, oh my god, I'm going to be sick kind of feelings, which isn't fun. It's not fun. So that's um, kind of the basics of what it does and what it feels like. It's not very fun, but you kind of, ugh. I want to say I got used to it, but like every time it happens, you're like, ugh, ugh. and it's just like, no, you don't get used to it. You get used to the whole uh, avoiding ways of getting to places like I avoid the bus. I avoid uh, walking to certain places because of previous panic attacks. So you kind of figure out ways around doing things to stop yourself having these panic attacks. But then doing that, you kind of develop new places and things that trigger them. So, oh, ah, triggers. What triggers my panic attacks? Okay, so 
leaving the house I'm just gonna read the list and then I'll explain throughout okay so it goes leaving the house which is not as bad anymore I can leave which is good <laughs> buses and traveling by myself which I just explained like I can't get on the bus because I, I don't know why I can't get on the bus but I've had to get on the bus before a couple of times by myself and I've literally got a couple of stops down the street and I've got straight back off again and then uh, I just look like a weirdo getting off the bus a couple of stops later uh, eating anything that isn't toast or crumpets in the mornings this is a really weird one since I was a kid I've had like a really strange eating thing which I will go on to later in the video and um, I can't if I'm going to like college or I'm going out in the day I have to have toast or crumpets or something toasted in the morning for breakfast I can't have cereal um, I can't have things like yogurt or fruit for breakfast because then I don't know I think it's kind of OCD like coping mechanism I don't know I'm not sure but I can't eat anything but that um, when I first started having them just talking about the panic attacks would cause me to have a panic attack so I didn't tell my dad up until two and a half years ago and I've been suffering from anxiety for five years now I developed it at the end of year nine beginning of year ten so yay <laughs> okay what does it say people saying or being sick if someone just randomly goes oh I feel quite sick today uh, my head goes oh my god they're going to throw up you don't like people throwing up let's have a panic attack so any even if right this is strange gonna share my mum and her husband have an ensuite in their bathroom and if one of them is ill normally instead of being ill in their ensuite and waking the other person up they walk round the corner to the main house bathroom and the other night my I with anxiety I have like I can hear I can pick up when people do stuff because I get quite paranoid a lot so um my mum went to use the opposite the big bathroom and I was like she's gonna throw up but she didn't so it's okay my mum's not ill don't panic <laughs> um going to new places or meeting new people it's not as bad anymore I like to meet new people so I'm going to uni next year which I chose to do this time last year I was adamant I was not going I didn't want to meet anyone new and I didn't want to go to a new place but instead of staying at college for next year I decided I'll go to university and obviously it's a completely different campus completely new people so I'm pretty much over that now um, waking up from having a bad dream will cause me to wake up in a panic attack like I'll be having the panic attack while I'm still asleep and then as soon as I wake up I'm covered in cold sweat and I'm like crying and it's just not pretty <laughs> uh, if I think I'm going to have a panic attack I cause a panic attack so people are like oh don't panic you're fine you're with a bunch of people and then I'm like oh my god but what if I do have a panic attack and because I'm worrying about having a panic attack it just causes a panic attack and it's kind of annoying but oh well uh, the next thing I have is what does it affect it affected my grades in school and I know this for a fact because I was predicted all C's and a B in art but I did not get my B in art and I got C's and D's and I was kind of upset because when I first ha had panic attacks I did not go to school a lot I was given a special little card like pass that it was kind of like a get out of jail free card it was a get out the classroom because I'm having a panic attack card so they tried to keep me in school as much as I could but it was it was hard it was not fun um, I'm no longer able to work a couple of months ago I had to give up my job and this was not even having to get the bus not having to drive anywhere I had to walk about 20 minutes down the road from my house and I just was having too many panic attacks all the time so I had to ring them up and say I can't work anymore because of my health <laughs> yay um, I can't see like I can see my friends but I tend not to like most of my friends go oh we're all going down to the pub do you want to go and I'm like no 
because my mind goes they're gonna get drunk they're gonna throw up so i tend not to, i tend to avoid people which isn't good because i like to be sociable but i don't know it's hard it's not fun mm, um don't always do things i want to like holidays and i stopped my live stream okay so i don't go on holiday anymore bec mainly because one i don't have any money due to the not being able to work and two due to the if i get on a plane i will probably have a panic attack and knowing the fact that i can't get off the plane to get back home means i will constantly have panic attacks because they last between five and 25 minutes and i get mine in bursts a lot like zoella does she gets them as well like that and a lot of people i know from my personal life get them like that and it's it's definitely not the best thing to have because you're like panicking 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 then you're okay for about 10 minutes and then it kicks in again and you're like oh it's like you can have a panic attack before you leave the house you'll be fine to leave the house afterwards and then as soon as you're like halfway to where you're meant to be you have another panic attack it's just not good at all and then um, next thing i have is my eating like i just said i've always had a weird eating habits when i was a kid but ever since my anxiety kicked in five years ago i've had um it's not an eating disorder because i'm not anorexic i'm nothing like that don't panic i am healthy i'm the right weight for my height and everything i went to doctors and got checked out so don't panic um but what happens is if i have a panic attack it means i won't eat anything except for fruit and then because i won't eat i start to feel extremely sick because i am so hungry and then i go to sleep because i can't eat to make myself stop feeling sick so i sleep and then when i wake up obviously i'm still really hungry so i just go back to sleep and then after waking up i feel sick after going to sleep and then all of this and it just carries on going until i have to force myself to eat something and it's just that's that's one of the worst things about it at the moment but that's not so bad anymore yay okay the next thing is what i have what i have done about my panic attacks okay so when i first developed them i stayed in the house for about three months straight the only place i would go was school and when i did go i stayed for a couple of lessons and then i went home because i couldn't stand being in there the whole day i just needed to be at home in my comfort zone and just because uh, being at home tends to stop a panic attack whatever like if someone goes okay we'll take you home i'm fine so i stayed at home for three months ish and my mum and stepdad said right you need to go to the doctors we need to find out what this is so we went to the doctors found out a bit about GAD which is generalized anxiety disorder was diagnosed with that and then they tried to get me to go on tablets I refused flat out to go on tablets I was like I do not want to be on medication no so um after a while I must have been about another three or four months not on medication I still didn't go anywhere it didn't get any better so we went back to the doctors like every couple of weeks we were back in the doctors trying to get um, new ways to stop the panic attacks, new ways to get my breathing to go better, but it didn't help. So we went back, and I'm now on. No, when I went back, I was given what's it called? Pro Pranolol, I think. I think that's what it's called. I don't have my tablets to hand to tell you. I think it's called Propranolol. It is a beta blocker, and from what I believe, in your brain, you've got these little strand things that send signals to each other. So you've got them here, and then the little signal goes in this space and like zap each other so they know what to do. So the beta blocker kind of stops the panic signal going from one part of your brain bit to the other part to tell your brain, oh my god, you're having a panic attack. So it kind of stops that. So they, I was on 10, is it milligrams? I think I don't know 10 whatever you take in tablets and then that didn't work for four four years just over four years I was on just 10 milligrams it didn't work I had to take them three times a day and it still didn't work so we went back to the doctors at the end of 2013 and I am now on 
I think it's a 40 milligram tablet instead so they help a lot even though I still can't do a lot of things that I would like to do that's just because I don't feel comfortable doing them yet but my tablets have helped a lot so that's pretty much everything I can think of right now so yeah this was a really long video I do apologize for that my anxiety is getting slightly better um yeah so if you guys feel the same kind of things that at least now you have more of an insight into what it could be or what if you know you have this uh, anxiety you know what you're suffering from so i hope this helped and i will see you guys in my next video bye